everyone, it's Anna Haferman, and today I went and picked up my first ever Superba machine. And so I'm gonna do a little unboxing here. Um, I did look at it when I picked it up and to make sure that it wasn't super rusty and that most of the important parts were there, but I really haven't gone through it. The price was good enough that I decided that it would be a good deal no matter if it was all there or not so here we go I apologize because I'm outside and there's work being done next door so it may be there may be a little background noise but I wanted to do this out here because um, you know in case it's something I really either bugs or really have to clean or um, whatever so I've got a manual uh, so this is an EMS-4, and I did not know that until this minute. Uh, I found this on Craigslist. The man who sold it to me, it was donated to his charity, which was a rescue mission. So uh, I felt good about the price and also just making kind of a donation. So it looks like I've got... A manual for the machine and a manual for the programmer which is some sort of punch pad thing and then it looked like in here I've actually got a list of what should be in it that probably came when they bought it uh, but not sure I've also got the uh, motor drive and so that I think I before I went to pick this up today I looked online and there was a manual online it's kind of hard to read so I may upload this one um, but this is what I'm going to go through to see if I have most of my parts and then this box was intriguing so this has This has something to do with the programming. And so there's another little book which shows you patterns, things like that. Darning needle. Um, and whoops, some cassette tapes, which I'm thinking there is a possibility that these are in French because. Uh, this is a Superba or white machine, so, but I, it came from Michigan originally, I, the man said, so maybe it's, possibly it's in English. Uh, I hope it's in English, and I hope that I have a cassette player. We may, let's see. So here's a small box, and uh, it has, uh, these were in, one of the bigger boxes when we packed it up, but we couldn't get them to fit right, so I just stuck them in here. And then this box from the Atargia carriage, which is empty. So, there, with this stuff. And then there's some um, patterns and uh, old, uh, it looks like some patterns on how to do some things. So here are some patterns that came with it. Uh, it looks like these are uh, things that go with the Superba, maybe just hard to say. This one seems about uh, different models of white or Superba. And then there's some old seminar books from the Great Lakes Area Seminar. This was from Michigan, so that makes sense. Machine Knit America, a few copies. An old Machine Knitting News. The Second British American Machine Knitting Expo. Carriage trade, I've never seen this one. Uh, V-neck raglan sweaters from the neck down. I actually own this already, so I'll probably sell that. 
this big nine plus magazine i'm pretty sure this is a superba oriented magazine the singer magazine which uh, has a sewing section but mostly is about shoe knitting and there's another big nine plus so those are some good sources a bunch of those. The Singer Big Nine Plus. And here's Roxy coming to check out the scene. And uh, Profitable Machine Knitting and just different magazines. And I really like reading the old machine knitting magazines because uh, you can get good tips and patterns and things like that. And somebody is going to have to get off that box. So here's the yarn haul. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, about 15 cones of different yarn in sort of late 80s, early 90s colors. Uh, some of it I like, some of it I'll probably either donate or use for waste yarn. There's several Bramwell four ply acrylic. Uh, which works nice on a standard gauge machine. Uh, these are pretty colors. I don't know what it is. It's all in Roundup. Sort of empty, half empty cone of something. There's uh, Tam Natureza, which looks like it may be cotton. It's cotton. There's some of this Denise Burnton yarns. And uh, this one's called Fantasia, which um, I think may be cotton. Cotton. Tell, I don't see it on that part. I don't know. It looks like it's cotton. There's another Denise Gluten. Bluton. There's a Bramwell Duo Magic, which is great for the, the sap passive. Then there's this. I don't know what that is, but it's some nice colors. So, and here's Roxy in a garbage bag. So I've gotten Roxy out of the bag and now I'm going to open this box. It says fragile. Uh, there's an umbrella and a wine glass, which means I guess, you know. So here's what's in this box. This, I believe, is the motor. And I have no idea how it works, so I'm not going to push anything too hard. Here's the rope counter, which I was concerned that maybe it wasn't in there uh, because I hadn't seen it. Guess who? And uh, here's two empty cones. And these two boxes are intriguing. Let's see what we get here. That looks like some sort of transfer carriage. an instruction book for that, uh, for uh, Adam. Contact Votre Chariot Moose. If a dear customer with your garter and lace carriage, you will be knitting garments in lace patterns and in garter stitches. That sounds great. Yes, it has to do with some sort of power source. So that will come at a later time. That button still works. Here it is. It's quite heavy. It's a big plug and some sort of helmet type thing. Now for the big reveal, I'm going to be opening this box. Uh, it says 1502. Um, hey, 1502 right there, so that may be the model number, and I know that is a model number of these machines, because I was doing a little bit of research. So, I've got it open, and here's, uh, 
pardon me, there's a box on the floor, so somebody's going to insist on getting into it. Okay, you can get in there. Oh, a box. Look at that. Don't scratch it. So here is what is on the top layer. And underneath, the machine is down there, so that will be the last thing. So let's uh, start unpacking. First of all, this is a pretty typical ball winder. I have a couple of these already, but they always come in handy. And the instructions for that ball winder. There. Now this uh, is a foot pedal, which probably goes to the motor. There's uh, some sort of power source. Um, very heavy weights that have a little bit of rust on them. Um, these are made of some kind of metal that uh, is heavy, but I'm not too concerned about the rust because it just seems to be on that metal. Here's a little brush. Here is, uh, this is some sort of weaving thing. I saw that when I was looking online. So there's a bunch of weights. Here's a pusher that looks like it originally came with a passive, but maybe not. Maybe it originally came with this. It seems to fit in there pretty well. Um, these things. There's a little bit more rust right there. This is one of the reasons I did this outside. Uh, I think that has to do with uh, centering the pattern or the row counter. I read a blog about these machines that had a, quite a bit of information and um, I didn't take it all in. So let's see, these look like sock Homes. These are interesting because they seem to be plastic on top. I have those for my Passup Duo 80, but they're metal uh, brush. And this thing seems to be some sort of cone winder. And I believe the cones that were in the other box you may fit on there. Let me There's the um, winder with the cone on top. Um, not sure how this works. I, it appears that you, you uh, I have a tripod, but this uh, spins so you wind the yarn. I'm not sure how, what you, where you set it and how, what you do, but I guess you wind yarn onto the cone, which just sounds kind of fun. So, fits back in there. Some more weights. It looks like I got two very large ones and five of the smaller ones. That's a tool. Let's see what's in this box. This looks like. Okay, so here's a needle selector. It looks like one one and two one. One two. Transfer tool, uh, two one, a some sort of river hook. Not sure. Piece of thread, which may be for threading something. It looks like. I thought it was just a random piece of thread, but I think it may have come with it. Looks like something you might thread a sewing machine with or something. It's a cute little box. So these big weights are substantial. They seem to weigh a couple pounds. There's some letters on the bottom, but and there is a little rust, but it seems mostly surface rust, so that should be okay. 
Okay, so moving on to this side, here's some yarn, pretty yarn. It looks like cotton or something. Here are clamps. One, two, three clamps. Okay, I hope three is enough. We'll see. some sort of plating thing. I don't know. That's a guess. Uh, here's a stitch gauge. That's pretty cool. Um, I really don't have any experience with Superbus, but I think they are five millimeter like pass up. Uh, so that's pretty cool because if so, this gauge would be the same, but you know, whatever. And I'm thinking it is like passive because this looks very much like a passive pusher. So, um, oh, for this, this says, oh, well, there's a carriage in here, and that looks like the yarn mast thing. is this thing and it looks like it's the Antarsia carriage because I think that word is the same uh, this is very interesting I'm trying to find the English but um, introduction no looks like it's in the print everything the Antarsia carriage will allow you to knit several colors in one row. Okay, so that's cool. So Antarsia with a plated stitch, Antarsia with side, stitches side by side, so there's a whole lot you can do. That's cool. I thought that empty Antarsia box was going to be a disappointment, but uh, I think that's what it came in originally unless it came with the machine probably did because it fits right in that little graphics on this. It goes from uh, gray to brown. Or sort of, so it's kind of neat. Oh, let's see. That goes there. So now I'm going to take these out and look at the actual machine. Here's the machine. And um, it's a double bed. And it looks like that. And it's got some green accents on it, which I'm really excited about because I like green a lot. I love the logo with showing how the yarn loops around. I like, looks like there's some sort of, uh, thing. I don't know if these are supposed to open. It seems like they are, but they seem kind of stuck, but we'll see how that goes. And I think that may wipe right off. So I'm going to remove this from the box. It's got, I think this is called a punch pad controller. So here it is out of the box. There's uh, lots of buttons and levers and things I don't know what they are. Um, and it, do, it looks like the protective film is still on this which is really cool because I love peeling that off. And there we go. So, moving across the bed easily. It's got, it looks like 180 stitches on each bed. There's some sort of 
lever here, which must be kind of a pitch lever or something. Uh, I don't know if I should have it rested on that. Got to get it on a surface. So it slides quite nicely. There's a little bit of styrofoam. I hate that styrofoam stuff because if the little pellets get everywhere, but it does serve its purpose. It looks like there's tiny bits of rust on some of the needles, but it seems to be real surface, surface rust. There, there's one, I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of rust on this needle here. seems to kind of just wipe right off so I'm not too concerned about it and I do have some extra needles which is really good so I, it seems like wherever it was stored maybe got a little damp but not does not appear too bad and it, it's very clean it doesn't really seem like anyone used it very much it doesn't really seem discolored I think these were always were originally beige oddly enough maybe they were white maybe that's uh, seems like they would be but the beige does kind of go with the brown so maybe that um, so there's all these levers that I need to learn so the water stain that was here seems to be coming off with a, just a damp towel so I'll work on that a little more later the back. So let's see what else I have in here. I have the cast on combs. That's pretty neat. I've got a little one, uh, medium. I've got four cast on combs with it. And I actually have some of these already that uh, came with my Duomatic 80 and um, but these are in far better condition. They don't seem bent. Interesting. Someone, I guess someone did that on their own. No, well, maybe that's how they came. It really doesn't seem like they used it. Oh, and then it's got the original owners. Um, finally, here's a mast. Um, so, as far as damage, the only thing I can really see is this tiny little hairline crack right there which doesn't seem to it's not going to affect anything um, a little tiny bit of rust on the weights and the needles but nothing bad uh, let's see and so far that's all I know the carriage moves across very nicely and quietly so that's pretty cool so we'll see to get this on a table. I know I had some pattern cards for this. I don't know if I showed two of these little things, and I think they have something to do with the cones, but I'm not sure yet. Here are some of the pattern mylars, and I have no idea how these work. I'm not sure if I'm missing a piece that where these would feed in. Um, Looks like maybe you cut them. Let's see. Maybe you cut them and put them in this slot. That seems kind of like what it might be. Uh, we'll see. And then there's some paper ones. Which, I'm not sure what those do. And then this shows you how to do it, so there's a programmer, there's some controls. What do you think, Rox? What do you think? Fast forward a little bit, and I've been playing with uh, the machine, and I decided to pull up the coating, the little protective coating. It turns out that was what was green, and underneath it is brown, um, which I'm happy with. 
I do love green, but I like this nice pristine brown panel as well.